Hello, I am Daniel Stepner. Eugène Isaïe was a colorful, larger-than-life violin soloist active in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Born in Liège, Belgium in 1858, he enjoyed a storied career in Europe and the United States. He died in Brussels in 1931. His forceful musical personality and his mastery of the violin became legendary already early in his career. He was also a composer, a conductor, and an important advocate for new music. Had he composed nothing, he would be remembered today for his well-documented premieres of Claude Debussy's String Quartet, César Franck's Sonata, Ernst Chausson's Poème, and for his advocacy of composers such as Faure, Saint-Saëns, Dandy, Lequeux, Elgar, and others. He also recorded a few works late in his career. But like many virtuosi of the 17th through 19th century, he composed throughout his career, producing solo violin music, chamber music, orchestral music, and even an opera. His early music reflects the playing styles of his two most illustrious violin teachers, Henrik Wieniowski and Henri Vuitton. His mature music has unique qualities. It is colorful, violinistically brilliant, and harmonically mercurial and highly inventive. Best known among Isai's works are his six sonatas for violin alone, each dedicated to a fellow virtuoso violinist, and written down between 1923 and 26 after his active playing career was over. Virtually unknown are his ten preludes for violin alone, with the subtitle An Essay in Modern Violin Technique, perhaps because of this rather off-putting subtitle, as well as the prelude's delayed publication and their considerable technical challenge, the collection hasn't yet been taken seriously as a set of concert etudes. None of the preludes have even entered the battery of standard violin technical studies, which are mostly products of the 18th and 19th centuries. Each of these I preludes is devoted to an interval, the first is a study in unisons, the second in seconds, the third in thirds, and so on, progressing consistently through the final prelude in tenths. The intervals are sometimes realized vertically, that is, in the simultaneous sounding of two or more notes, or horizontally, that is, single notes sounded sequentially, separated by the interval in question. Each prelude has its own harmonic language, determined largely by the particular interval. Isai was clearly influenced in part by his friend Debussy, whose 12 Etudes for Piano from 1915 includes several numbers devoted to particular intervals, thirds, fourths, sixths, and octaves. Other movements in Debussy's set are not concerned with intervals, Rather, they explore characteristic pianistic procedures, such as ornaments, opposing sonorities, or composite arpeggios. Isai's preludes also involve a variety of violinistic tactics, for instance, staccato bowings, bariolage bowings across strings, ornaments, and so on. But the main organizing principle of each one of the preludes is its particular interval. Debussy's influence is also very evident in the prelude's occasional whole tone harmonic language and in the infrequent use in the frequent use of non-traditional modulations of harmony. The preludes were left as a working manuscript among Isai's unfinished works. Some were mere sketches, some virtually complete, most had erasures, alterations, and unclear details of one kind or another. They were reconstituted, that is, edited and completed, by composer and educator Charles Radou Rogier, and published by Schott in 1952. Rogier reports that Isai had planned 13 studies. In addition to the 10 that had been published, there were three for which Isai left prospective descriptions, but no actual music. They would have been number 11, mixed intervals, number 12, Caprice, and number 13, Variations. Rogier's published edition of the Prélude faithfully transcribes Isai's 
idiosyncratic fingerings, bowings, and other technical directives and aids, even including his eye's verbal marginalia from the manuscript and his attached preparatory exercises, for instance, double stop scales in the interval in question. Roger even transcribes Isaiah's written memos to himself. For instance, quote, full of promise requires careful retouching, unquote. And Roger provides conscientious footnotes for his own speculative editings. Thus, the mixture of musical notation, verbal texts, and footnotes in three languages in the published edition make the preludes look on the page more like an architectural blueprint overburdened with detail and less like a polished creative work. But playing the actual music reveals Isaiah's fertile poetic imagination, born of a daring searching technique and a love of creating new sounds. I believe he meant these to be serious concert etudes, much like the musically substantial piano etudes of Chopin, Liszt, Debussy, Rachmaninoff, Bartok, and Stravinsky. This is why I felt challenged to learn, perform, and record them. There are, in fact, wonderful concert etudes by virtuoso violinists of the past. Sometimes they're labeled etudes, sometimes caprice, sometimes matinee. Like their piano counterparts, these are attempts to balance musical fantasy with particular technical challenges. For violinists, those that are especially engaging are by Locatelli, Gavinier, Paganini, Rode, Ernst, as well as by Isaiah's teachers Vignovsky and Vuitton. But somehow the genre of violin etudes has taken on an aura of dry calisthenic studies. Those most employed in standard, standard pedagogy were by lesser violinists and pedagogues. Perhaps this is why Isai elected to call these studies preludes. <laughs> 